I'm sorry, but I don't think you can call anything a sport until both teams know there's a game going on that day. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for coming out. Um, wow, you look good. You people do look good. Um, yeah, you're welcome. See, I've done one too many college audiences, and it's nice to see people know how to dress. I mean, if I see one more backwards baseball hat or plumber's butt because their pants are halfway down, I'm going to snap. You guys look good. And um, nice to see you. Um, now, before I say this, I don't want to offend anybody because um, I'm a card-carrying member of AARP, too, okay? <laughs> But I like looking out and seeing a more mature audience. Did I say that in a good way? Yeah. Good. Because yeah, age is just a number, right, people? Right, people? Yeah. All right, because some of y'all got some pretty doggone good numbers going on out there. But that doesn't matter. You're here. You're doing stuff. And that's what does matter. Because, see, my parents, they won't do anything. I was talking to my dad the other day. I says, you and Mom have gone anywhere, done anything. He's like, Yeah. A couple weeks ago, we went to one of those memory seminars. It was great. We loved it. <laughs> At least they got out of the house. <laughs> then I started thinking memory seminar doing stand-up might help. So, so, Dad, you know, what's the guy's name? I want to check him out. <laughs> You're probably way ahead of me on this one, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, what do you call that red flower, long stem, thorns? I went... A rose? He goes, that's it, rose! <laughs> Tip of my tongue, had it the whole time. Rose, got it, don't move. Rose. Hey, Rose. What's the name of that guy we went to go see a couple weeks ago? <laughs> so if I mess some up later, you'll cut me some slack now, right? <laughs> Actually, I told you that joke so I can tell you this story. Uh, this last Christmas, I was booked to do a retirement community down in Sarasota, Florida. Any of y'all been to, down to Sarasota? Probably not from this part of the country. <laughs> but let me tell you, they got some old, old. Oh, that's, that's the petrified forest down there, folks. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Sarasota, Florida, only city in the country where Miracle Lear has a superstore. <laughs> Met this one guy, his social security number was three. <laughs> and his dad told me that dinosaur tastes just like chicken. Okay, so, well, anyway, I get down to the retirement community, and, you know, I've, I've heard, we all know about the older people forgetting stuff, and I heard they had a pretty good sense of humor about that, so I figured what better way to test the water than tell that rose joke. And I did, and I got to tell you, it killed. They loved it. Yeah. So I told it like 50 times. <laughs> Yeah, ain't broke, don't fix it. I got four paychecks that night. <laughs> I'm just here because I wanted to see Provo. I'm going back tomorrow. <laughs> now, but that's where comedy comes from. Have you ever wondered where a comedian gets his material? Anybody wonder? Yeah. It's real simple. I don't have a job. <laughs> so I sit around all week watching y'all do stupid stuff. <laughs> On the weekend, you buy a ticket, I stand here, tell you what you did. <laughs> it's really that simple. <laughs> a couple examples, you think these are made up, but these happened. Uh, I was on my way down to Florida, I'm, I'm from Atlanta, so I'm driving down to Florida for a show and stopped in a place called Tifton, Georgia for lunch, and they sat me next to these four old codgers. You know them. They're the four guys that are retired and they get together every day and solve all the problems of the world, right? <laughs> well, today's subject was Walmart versus Kmart as Walmart being the better store. So the leader took over. He goes, well, shoot. Everybody in town likes Walmart better. Go by there anytime, day or night. Look at the parking lot. Walmart's always half full. Kmart's half empty. <laughs> <laughs> Spit food out of my mouth. <laughs> then they offered him a job. He goes, yep, yep, yep. They want me to be a Walmart greeter. Offer me $200 a week. I said, oh, no. I don't leave the house for less than $500 a month. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's a great source of material. Um, does anybody else here have parents like I do that never really caught on to the electronic age? Like, yeah, you show my mom a universal remote, <laughs> she will drop like one of those fainting goats on YouTube. You ever see those things? <laughs> well, we finally taught her how to tape on VHS. You fight the battles you can win, okay? 
I, I showed up at her house one day and let myself in. She goes, hey, Mom, I'm here. And she's in the corner like, shh, I'm taping Matlock. <laughs> Mom tried to help me out with the Super Bowl a couple years ago. NFL fans? Any NFL fans? Well, I'm from Atlanta, so it's not always easy. But you may or may, may not remember this, but two years ago in the Super Bowl, the Falcons blew the largest lead in Super Bowl history. Remember, 28 to 3 in the third quarter, and we lost. Well, on that day, I was getting off a ship in Belize. My route home was Belize to Jamaica, Jamaica, Miami, Miami to Atlanta. It was a 12 hour commute. My mom, her job's taping the game. My job, don't hear the score. <laughs> What's the one thing you see in every airport? <laughs> TVs. Y'all, I did it. I don't know how, but I did it. Uh, it, it just earplugs and blinders, I don't know. But I got home, it's like 1 a.m. I get over to her house. I guess I got a little snarky, I upset her. I was going, Mom, please tell me you didn't mess up. Please tell me you taped the game. She goes, yes, I did, Mr. Smarty Pants. Here you go. I was like, oh, thank you. Then she looked at me and goes, but you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, three hours of joy and one hour crying like a baby is what I missed out on that one. So. Uh, well, I mentioned the cruise. I work a lot on the cruise ships. Uh, anybody else cruise? Any cruises? Yeah. Well, I want to throw some... Um, uh, advice out there for you first-time cruisers. Now, this doesn't apply to you skinny people. <laughs> However, if you're a little fluffier back there like myself, <laughs> like the first day on your cruise, you forget you're going to be there all week, right? You're going to do everything and eat everything in sight for the next 12 hours. Well, about midnight, you go back to your cab, and then you go into that little bathroom they give you. <laughs> Did anybody ever warn you in advance about the suction power of those toilets? <laughs> Oh, they will suck the spots off a of leopard, people. I'm not kidding now. Back to that advice. Um, <laughs> be careful if you've been sweating. <laughs> you don't want to form a seal, okay? That's what I'm getting at, people. Yeah. Once you came to do what you're going to do do, <laughs> before you flush, lift a cheek. Now, you need to burp your butt like Tupperware. You gotta get some air flowing. Because it'll pull you in out. <laughs> the rest of the week, you're walking around with this butt hickey action going on. And the butt hickey doesn't look like a high school hickey. Look, no, it looks like ringworm. You got 18 inch red circle. Oh, uh, traveling all over the Caribbean uh, on ships. Anybody ever been to the Bahamas? In Nassau, Bahama, that island is 21 miles from tip to tip. In the middle of that island, there's a hotel. On that hotel, there's a sign, and on that sign, it reads, Truckers, welcome. <laughs> Let's go through this one together, shall we? How many Bohemians get in their big rig somewhere around mile one? Knock out 11 miles. Oh boy, I'm tired. Looky there, truckers, welcome. <laughs> Rest my butt up for that 10 mile drive in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Actually, some of you won't laugh because you're probably thinking, well, he probably had a sleeper cab. He wouldn't spend the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from Atlanta. I live my whole life in the South. Any other Southerners here? One, okay, <laughs> this is gonna work right. Actually, you're, uh, you can embrace this. The rest of you people are my target audience. When uh, Alex brought me up, he used the term Southern Not Stupid. That's my brand. What that's all about is as a lifetime Southerner, I am sick and tired of everybody thinking we're stupid just because we're from the South. My new Southern friend, I bet you catch a lot of grief, don't you? So, yeah, we got stupid people, but so does everybody else. Okay? And you know what I blame this whole stereotype on? It's Hollywood. Because as long as we've all been alive, they've been putting things out like Dukes of Hazard, Green Acres, Hee Haw. You people watch those and think they're documentaries, don't you? <laughs> well, I've done a really good job, almost 25 years now, coast to coast, letting people know through humor that's not how we are. We got indoor plumbing and everything. <laughs> and I've done a real good job until about two years ago. That's when I might have met my match. <laughs> Honey Boo Boo. 
so you've seen this creature. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and pick on a 10-year-old child. That's wrong. I will tell you this, though. Honey Boo Boo is living proof that Miss Piggy is alive and well <laughs> and married Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Got a better theory. Talk to me after the show. I'm all ears. I actually did this on a hunch. You'll love this. I looked it up. Do you know how you say Honey Boo Boo in Italian? Anybody? Snooky. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I like to find stupidity outside of the South. I just want a level playing field and find humor in it. First example I ever came up with was back in the 90s. Guy in England got the Nobel Prize because he said he cloned a sheep. You remember that? Do you believe it? Yeah. Oh, don't believe that. <laughs> you want to impress me? Go out to any field in this country. You find me two sheep that don't look alike. <laughs> now you've done something. <laughs> uh, Ah, uh, and there's a lot of stupidity I found in Hollywood. That's a great place to go out to L.A., a lot of stupid. My vet, he moved his practice from L.A. to Atlanta, and I wish I brought a picture. The sign is still up in front of his business. It says, Grand Opening, the Atlanta Veterinarian and Taxidermy Service. <laughs> yeah, our motto is, either way, you will take your dog home. <laughs> Traveling around, I get to see all kinds of great things. Again, that's the best part about my job. Uh, one of my favorite cities I've ever been to is San Antonio. Anybody been there? That is a beautiful town, especially at night, isn't it? And of course, the Alamo is there. And uh, I didn't know until I got there, but the Alamo is right in the middle of the city, isn't it? It's surrounded by the whole city. And I'm no military expert, but after taking the whole tour, I was thinking, you know what Davy Crockett should have done? Was put him a cannon up here on top of the Marriott. <laughs> Maybe some snipers on Bank of America. I think he could have held it a little bit longer. I don't know. <laughs> we got some stupid laws in this country. Now, there's, I don't want to name the state, but there's a, more than one state that has this, that if you're convicted of cruelty to an animal, you'll get two years in prison. That's a good start, and I think it should be more. And remember, I'm a Falcon fan, so I really mean that. <laughs> remember Mike Vick, okay. Two years hurt an animal. Same state, if you punch your female wife or girlfriend, you'll get six months. Maybe. <laughs> Ladies, you have a pro please have a problem? <laughs> now, I don't think that you're nice people. This would never happen to any of y'all. But until we can fix this horrible law, we got to make sure we get these jerks put away for as long as possible, don't we? Don't we? Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's the phone call they need to make. It's like, <laughs> hello, police. My boyfriend just hit me with a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just do the math. That's all I'm saying. Uh, speaking of animals, uh, back on that again. Any hunters here tonight? Where are my hunters at? Yo. Animal murder, right up front. Anybody else? <laughs> See. I'm a big guy from the South. People think I hunt. I cannot shoot an animal. I don't know how you can, but you'll love this. I said those exact same words on a ship with 2,000 people in the audience. I don't even shoot an animal. Back of the balcony, this old guy yells out, pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> but sir, I am not going to give you a hard time for hunting. You know why? It's legal. I believe in the law. You have a right to hunt. Go hunt. If I got a problem with it, it's my right to shut up, mind my own business, and stay home. Fair enough? Yeah. We all still friends? Yeah. Especially because you got guns. I don't want to make you mad. <laughs> well, we'll ask everybody here one small favor tonight, though. Could you please stop calling hunting a sport? <laughs> it's not a sport, it's hunting. I'm sorry, but I don't think you can call anything a sport until both teams know there's a game going on that day. <laughs> Thank you. Post a schedule, something. <laughs> wow. Well, I was doing some shows not too long ago um, in Pennsylvania Amish country. Any of y'all been up that way? That is beautiful country, isn't it? But let me tell you this, Amish comedy clubs, sound system stinks. <laughs> You're a whole lot smarter than most crowds, I do. 
Now, we do stupid things in the South, too. And if I don't talk about that, I'm not leveling the playing field. And that's what I'm here to do is try to all play on the same field. So I was like, um, I was doing some shows in Alabama. Now, you may or may not know this, but they're on Central Time. I'm on Eastern Time. So Alabama's an hour behind Georgia. <laughs> Okay, some of the places they send me are like 50 years behind, but you know. <laughs> Sake of the story, one hour behind. When I go there, I don't change my watch. I can figure out one hour, okay? So I stopped in Birmingham for gas. I go in to buy a Coke. This kid behind the counter sees my watch and just freaks. He's like, sir, 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 sir. <laughs> Your watch is wrong. You need to fix that. <laughs> what? Your watch says three o'clock. It's only two o'clock. That's wrong, wrong, wrong. You fix that right now. <laughs> Whoa. It's like, dude, it's okay. Cause see where I'm from right now, it is three o'clock. So we're cool. Y'all, <laughs> he looks at me like, ah, you're from the future. <laughs> What do you do with that? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I sold that night's lottery numbers, made 50 bucks. <laughs> now, I know we live in a country where everybody's supposed to have an equal opportunity at everything, but there are some things we need to step up and get rid of right now, or at least stop some people from doing it. And the top of my list, <laughs> homeschooling. <laughs> Folks, it ain't for everybody. Now, I don't mean to pick, but you know, kids in Alabama will graduate, that are homeschooled will graduate from high school when they are nine years old. Yeah. Because by then their parents are just looking at them like. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> really? There you go. Okay. We learned y'all we know that you graduated. <laughs> Kid goes away to college, he has to plant Uncle Cooter's trailer down the path, I guess. <laughs> now here's something I get teased about a lot from my friends up north, and I'll just jump into it with both feet. And that's Civil War reenactments. <laughs> yeah, we don't just do them in the South, we do them big. I don't know if you've ever heard of this place called Stone Mountain Park, big beautiful park. But every year, in the worst heat and humidity you could imagine, thousands of guys will spend a ton of their own money on thick wool Confederate uniforms. <laughs> Live in a tent, eat off the dirt, just every day they can march out into that field and reenact a butt whooping that we came in second on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it funny to anybody else, we actually still have a grocery store chain called Win Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> been 150 years ago. That's hopelessly optimistic. <laughs> Didn't even spell it right. <laughs> Here's something that happened to me a while back that was half stupid, half just cracked me up. There's a town in Alabama that when I'm driving down to the Gulf of Mexico, you have to go through, and it's spelled really weird. It's spelled E-A-U-F-A-U-L-A. -A -A. Has anybody ever heard of this? Probably. Well, for over 40 years, I've been going through this town, and I never learned how to pronounce it. It's driving me crazy. So I figured, you know what? Doggone it. Next time, I want to stop and get a local. That's the best way, isn't it? So get a local to teach me. So I stopped in the first building I could find. Go in. Sweet little lady behind the counter. I go, ma'am, you got to help me. Can you please tell me where I am and say it slowly so I'll understand? She's like, I. <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> Thank you. I figured the E was silent. <laughs> Here's my favorite example I ever found about stupid people have going on outside of the South. This happened in the Midwest. Um, three guys were all convicted of the same murder and they're sentenced to die on the same day. Now, I'm not gonna go pro or con on the death penalty. I would never do that to you, but I do wanna point out the funny thing about this is the judge forgot to decide what order to execute them. Somebody's gotta go first. We needed a batting order. <laughs> and it wasn't like Texas where they got the electric couch. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, 
the warden stepped up. He said, I will execute these people numerically. And what he meant by that is, you know that number they put on their prison shirt? He used that. Good away as any of what cracked me up is I figured these three guys checked into death row thinking they had what? 20 years to appeal? Very first day they walked past the, de past the death chamber, look up, there's a big sign hanging up like you see at a deli. <laughs> Now serving number 747-4505B. <laughs> well, again, not going pro or con, just pointing out the humor. Uh, they use lethal injection in that state. Did you know the last thing they do before they stick them and kill them is get a cotton ball with alcohol and disinfect their arm? <laughs> Oh, it gets better. Because once they're gone, they pluck that needle off, throw it away. Get a brand new sterile shiny one on there for the next guy. People. But if there's ever a time to recycle. <laughs> this is it. Well, guys, you have been amazing. Um, I want to leave you people with a little gift, though, because you deserve a little extra tonight. And... Um, before I give you this gift, you all have to do me a quick favor. Think back in your past. We all have somebody we want to get back at, don't we? <laughs> Some people's butt cheeks just tightened up right now. <laughs> but I've been watching. You look like nice people. You're not the violent type. And if you're anything like me, <laughs> way too lazy to stalk. So. <laughs> I have a three-point plan at little or no cost to get back at these people. Now, step one's real simple. Um, Picture what kind of car they're driving. Have you got it in your mind? All you need to know is the car's year, make, and model. Okay? With that little piece of information and about 20 bucks, you can go to Walmart. Shoot, they're open right now. You can buy and install for them a locking gas cap. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> Thank you. It's so simple. Well, you don't give them the key. See, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but one day this week, they will coast up to that pump on fumes. <laughs> you win. <Okay. laughs> Step two. Uh, tomorrow morning, swing by your local post office. They have stacks of these. They're free. Take all you want. They even pay the postage. I think you can even do this online. I love this thing. It's the moving change of address form. <laughs> Getting ahead, that's good. What you do <laughs> is you fill out your insignificant other's name and address right up here on the top. Down here on the bottom, just have all their mail sent <laughs> wherever you want it to go, actually. Yeah, make it a family project. It's fun for the kids. Let them pick the state. <laughs> But they fix it. I don't know how they always fix it. Usually takes about a year. <laughs> they haven't paid a bill. Their credit score is terrible. Well, that's where you move in for the kill. Now, this last one's my personal favorite, mostly because unlike the moving form, this one's not a felony. <laughs> but if you would like to get some of these, Remember this, go email me, go to my website, southernnotstupid.com. Tell me you were here, tell me you want one, and I will send this to you, because I've got friends at their big headquarters where I can do this, okay? This is so much fun. Final step on the revenge is a return envelope from the Atlanta Center for Disease Control, the <laughs> CDC. <laughs> Just writes itself, doesn't it, Tim? Once you got this, all you need is a stamp, okay? Don't try to forge the letter. If you do, you'll blow the gag. You can't write the right letter. You just send this envelope, ripped open and empty. <laughs> they won't sleep for a month, okay? Now that's Southern Not Stupid. I'm Mark Evans. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. You've been a blast.